when it comes to kicking the habit. Tom Loveless fails and fails. I mean, geez, how stupid can you be? But I just, I'm addicted. I mean, I just cannot quit smoking. He's among the roughly 16% of U.S. adults who still smoke cigarettes. He first lit up nearly 50 years ago. I hate what it does to me. I hate the expense. I hate the odor. It upsets my wife. If I'm stressed, I start smoking. Nicotine addiction and tobacco smoking remain the number one source of preventable death in the U.S. And so anything we can do to help people is going to have a huge impact on mortality and quality of life for people in the U.S. Dr. Ryan Hibbs and the researchers in his neuroscience lab at UT Southwestern's Peter O'Donnell Jr. Brain Institute study how nicotine addiction occurs in the brain. They most recently determined the 3D structure of two microscopic proteins and made history. In this study, we used a new approach called cryoelectron microscopy using the, the new cutting edge facility on campus to, for the first time, get multiple structures of this important neurotransmitter receptor that's activated by nicotine out of one biological sample. Before this, no one had been able to obtain structures of two different proteins from one sample using cryo-EM or any other method. Now that we can compare these different classes of nicotine binding sites directly from the same sample, we should be able to better engineer drugs that will selectively interfere with nicotine activation of the receptor. So there's a hope there that we'll be able to come up with more selective therapeutics for nicotine addiction with fewer side effects. A promising advance for Dr. David Bayless's many patients. 95% of the quit attempts that people make on their own without medicines fail. He had smoking cessation programs at UT Southwestern's Harold C. Simmons Comprehensive Cancer Center and at Parkland Hospital. It's a vicious cycle with a nicotine addiction and if we could get further understanding of that pathway to lead to, again to new targets and new treatments that would be sorely needed. So folks like Loveless may one day get their brains responding in a positive way to behavior they already know is bad. This sounds promising, it sounds encouraging.